Buenos dias. I am going to be scoring some of the new applications. I believe there are, oh my gosh. 23. 23 here I need to create. As I go up here, we're looking for greens, yellows get reviewed, greens get accepted. We accepted far too many up at, top, at the top um, that had lower scores. Um, in RCF, uh, class RCF 001, and now we are opening up RCF, or class RCF 002, and um, everyone below this red line is part of that class. So we've already started accepting some um, and pushing them through and guiding them along uh, RCF University graduation. But I am going to go through here and grade these latest and see if we have any uh, new folks to accept. So I pull up my handy dandy little population checker. Why does that say Reno? So if I do eight, nine, oh, I did eight, six. This is in fact Reno. I wish it would not pop back and forth, but it is what it is. Right, 70, 0, 26, now we're good. All right. And the 70, 0 is it's Columbia, but kind of. It's like fringes, but they're gonna have to. So like this zip code is like, I would guess maybe 10 miles east Sorry, west of Columbia, South Carolina. So Columbia is the most major city in the radius. So that is the um, asset name we give it. If there is no major city, I would usually give it the name of the hometown where that person is. Um, but like, so for example, this major city was on the fringe and um, while it's not really their headquarter, like, center point, they would be required to service that area. Otherwise, they just wouldn't be accepted because if we, if we don't have a high enough number here, they just will not pass um, this application process. They have to get a high enough score to get to get accepted and then go through um, the whole program or go through RCF University anyway. You can see like this one, it's like up by Duluth, Minnesota, except there's no big city. Um, so I called it marble, um, but I can tell right now that this one probably won't make it. Um, I can pretty well tell you that. It's going to be 100,000 or more, I think I have it set at. Um, and that's just because we want to have more, a bigger pond to fish in. This one I think is going to be low as well. We have Huntsville, Alabama, kind of. This is another one. I'm pretty sure it's not exactly Huntsville. Oh, gee, barely. This is interesting. This is very interesting. So they're in, I think it's Arab, Alabama. I gave it Huntsville because I know that there is like, there's not much in that area. So let's see here. In this one, it is 446, 249. So this one will pass. It's just not going to get the max score. The application, I mean the market area. So I got ahead of myself. This market area one has to be. Like it has to, it can go up as high as 65 or it can be negative 500, depending on what it is. 
So like this one is fringe Huntsville. I would say, yeah, you have to take the whole Huntsville, you know, market area. I um, haven't really had any pushback on that because we're getting like, it's, it's free business to start. It's zero upfront cost to start. Um, not that it's free. But the RCF only charges when you acquire a recurring client. So we're not going to charge you ad spend, management fees, or setup fees. We want to get you rocking as quickly as possible. And we just ask that you pay a finder's fee whenever you, whenever we help you find a new recurring client. Um, I mean, that's like required. Um, so this one says yes here. That would automatically decline it normally, but I know that we, if I accepted someone in Milwaukee in our in class RCF001, but they did not, they did not graduate. So their application was not accepted for that class. Um, but this is still, this needs to be updated. Albany, Georgia. This one, I am quite sure that we have member interference. This one is like Northern Detroit. And then this one, Royal Oak. Anderson, Indiana. Nine one five or Billings, Montana. Four one one. Is it really that? Oh, it is. It's basically Huntington, West Virginia as well. Oh. I don't have high hopes for a lot of these passing, so we will just... So like, yeah, uh, that one's going to get up there due to, um, high growth. How it's and I'm going to be a part of this one. I'll pop out maybe some of the video. Yeah. 
Marietta, Georgia. Yes. And I knew how to say. From eight to zero eight seven. And now I have everything else filled out. So I'm just gonna go through what we have here. I've got um, the market area. I've got member and interference, where basically if we already have someone there, this is gonna flare yes, and going to give a severely negative score in the market area column and will not pass. Um, though, like I said, I know that Milwaukee, Columbia and Reno actually are not being interfered with. So once those go to the review stage, it will take off this yes tag. The next thing we look for is growth, right? We want to see how big they want to grow in terms of revenue so that we know kind of like what their hunger level is in terms of acquiring new recurring clients. Um, we also have it if they, okay, okay. if it's greater than 10,000, it will give them 50 points um, as well. So if they're at a $10,000 mark, it'll give them a good number in the growth stage. So not necessarily that they want to grow there, but it shows a level of competency that we want to reward on the application. The next thing we have is team. You know, do you have a sales team? Do you have admin? Do you have a cleaning team? Or is it just you doing the cleaning? Um, here, this one looks like it's just one cleaner. Typically, I mean, no one puts zero cleaners. They all think that like they count, which people who are applying, the members should never be cleaning themselves. They should be the business owner because um, there are so many expectations that you will have um, that you just won't be able to um, satisfy if you're cleaning. Like, you can't grow a business cleaning house. Right? You have to be working on your business. So if you don't have anyone in the admin space in your company and you definitely don't have a cleaning team, um, you will not, your application score will not be rewarded. Right? Next thing is acquisition. How many estimates do they deliver every month? And then how many new recurring clients? Do they sign every month? It's kind of funky just how I have the spreadsheet set up here. So the middle one is what I fill in. So I always take, for example, they say, this one says they deliver five to seven estimates a month, but they close less than three recurring clients. So I will designate five estimates delivered a month and they close two clients. So see 16 to 20, I always take the lowest one um, just because people typically overestimate what they're able to do. Um, but I want to know if they're already effectively closing clients. If they're not, it will reflect here in the ACQ box. This one here is a 20. It did not pass. They were still declined, but they, they got a high score here because they deliver so many estimates. They just don't close any. Well, that's not what we're looking for, right? Let's find another one. This one's a good one right here. 67. They, they were accepted. They were just one point below going green. So I know that the, these, uh, Victoria's got a, a terrific company. She delivers more than 21 estimates and closes more than 21 clients. I don't know if it's true, but it's still, we still want to know that from them before we push them through our CF. So we want to see they think they sign every month. Lastly, we have the outreach column. How quickly are you reaching out to new leads and how, how strong is your follow-up game? So I come over to the TTL column, just in minutes. Number of minutes, how long does it take you to, on average, get back to a new lead? Someone calls and says, hey, I want an estimate request. How many minutes does it take for you to get back to we got 15, 20, 8, 2, 5, 1. I know I saw something wild. 180. Three hours. Three hours. Next, I ask if they use a CRM. 
And lastly, I would need them to articulate their follow-up. I ask them what their follow-up process is like. I say it would be very descriptive in your answer. This is the most important question on this application. So they will fill out, some people will put in some long answers. This person must have typed something wrong. They said no, this person said call. Like, <laughs> some people will put long answers that are just not correct, that are just wrong answers. I need to know if you can explain your follow-up process, which means, when a new lead comes in, we send a text message right, right away. We call them right after. If we don't hear from them, we will leave a voice message, voicemail and say, hey, we just texted you. We're just trying to get a reply at this point. We're also then gonna send an email. We have already made three touches on our first day and we will follow up with them every single day until we get an answer from them, whether it be yes or no. So this answer doesn't need to be long. You just need to be able to articulate your follow-up process. I just need to know if you have one. If you can't articulate that process or if you don't understand the question we're asking, you don't have a follow-up process and you will not make it through the application. Your, your, your score on your application will not allow it to pass. Few people actually say or actually are able to articulate. If it's close, I've been giving the benefit of the doubt to start. Over time, we're going to get very, very strict we don't have as much education on the application process yet. Nevertheless, um, um, we want to see that articulation. We want to see that you're using a, a CRM because that shows that you've gotten to a point where you're like, holy crap, we have too many leads. We have too many clients. We can't do all this on pen and paper anymore. We need to move to software. If you're at that stage, you're big enough, you're, you're a strong enough company that we can we can calm that gas pedal and go from here. If you are using a CRM, but you're smaller, that shows capability. It shows that you understand that a CRM is required and uh, you understand how important it is to offload that, that tedious cognitive load. It's still necessary, but there's a lot of admin, a lot of menial tasks that a business needs to get done that the business owner should not be doing. That's what, what kills a lot of folks. All right. Now it's time to score. We have a score to start out here, and that is basically their app score. That is a hidden internal only score that basically allows like, it gives them a head start or not. Um, this one's like, it's basically, in terms of ideal clients, where the RCF would have maximum impact. So I'll say, I'm not gonna give like attributes on it because we don't, we can't have the, we don't want the system to be gained. So we know what we are looking for before they come in, like when they apply like this, and now I can go ahead and apply the actual total score. So this is actually different than this total score. So if we go through the market area, we've got Columbia, negative, we're, we're way down because it, it's showing member interference, but I know, like I said, we don't have one there. We can do the same thing for Milwaukee, but we will put it to um, reviewing or deciding, and it'll take it away. Moving down into Texas, San Antonio's great, Marble, Minnesota, not going to work. Retina, Virginia is, is if it's a 10, it's just not like negative. If we want 65. That shows like the highest potential. OKC is right up there. Huntsville, Alabama, not, not terrific, but still alive. Bartlesville, alive. Baton Rouge, pretty good. It's like middle, it's like, you know, you're not topping out at 65, but you're 30 some points. Only need to get up to 200 to make it go green, and I think 160 to have it go yellow. Milwaukee, Wisconsin definitely will make it. Um, switch this to exciting. Just to get the number here and give it a chance. Okay, moving down. Albany, Georgia is alive. 
not great because of our negative 23 start with the average score. We got 10 here, Washington. This is definitely number interference. So, um, on it anyway because I already know. All right. Michigan, these two are good. Indiana is good, so we got Indianapolis, Montana, Billings, just barely alive. Um, alive, Minnesota, not gonna happen. Leo Minster, Massachusetts, these are all gonna pop out except for the last one. All right, that is our market area score. Uh, we have a reset of like who's, we, now we can, we'll be able to see who's like closest in the running. This is just kind of my fun way of scoring. So um, there's one on here that I definitely want to look for. It is, um, what was it? Well, there's a couple of them. Anyone with over 10, I'm keeping my eye on. I kind of hate that both the Michigan ones are there, but this one will get the nod because of their growth factor. So let's see how, let's go through this. Growth factor, <clears throat> score of 33. They are at $300 a month and want to get to 5,000. So their growth factor is like 16.7. You can see right here in the E column. Um, it, it's great that they want to grow that much, but them being at 300, you know, it's, I know that they don't have a staff yet, and I, I can obviously see that by moving over in a couple of columns there. Um, there's no one on staff as far as admin, there's two cleaners. So like, I don't know what you can do for $300 a month. Um, it's what it is. All right, so San Antonio, decent sized as well. Now these ones are gonna get a little smaller. It's gonna be nice. Okay. I score because from 275 a month up to 8,000 again. That was real similar to the other one. This Massachusetts going from 10,000 to 40. This that's a great application to stay alive. We got this one with the two Michigan ones. And again, I am unsure about, well, Custom Maids operates in Michigan, so I want to see if we can get that one there. Portland, ooh, excellent, that one's, oh boy. Yeah, we're going to watch that one big time. That one, and Leo Minster, Massachusetts. All right, so the team, this is where um, they will start to really separate because it'll designate a negative three for um, those that don't have admin, right? And if they have a bigger team of cleaners, they will get a higher score here. They're all pretty small. Excellent, I want to see this one be as well. Excellent. All right, we've had one go yellow. We've got two columns left. ACQ scores are not terrific, but I'm not, I didn't expect much here. Okay, that one's all right. I kind of want to save them for last. All right, all right. That one, that saved it pretty well. So let's go through now outreach just to start helping. I know that one's not gonna make it. This one's not. And unfortunately I do know that I kind of won't be able to right. I already had declined. Who is it? Maybe I just, oh, it's like these. 
you don't have admin and I'm learning that that is a killer in our first two classes because we have leads coming in all day. So if you're cleaning all day, you're not getting back to leads quickly. So you're also scored on your TTLs. It's TTL is time to lead how long it takes you to get back to the lead. So it really hurts TTLs if you're in the field. So we can't have, like, it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And we are just going to have to eliminate those applications, basically. They're not eliminating, but pass on. So I pretty well don't expect any of these, this, these, They fell apart, like they're, they're all right. Um, but they didn't use the CRM, and they didn't particularly the follow up. Oh, that, that is a that dealt a blow, but we've got three more, two more at least. All right. All right. Okay. That, that's what I like to see. I was getting a little bummed because we had a lot of reds here. We haven't had a lot that we were going to um, review. So let's move this. You. I'm sorry, it's just I, I can't take him in like this. So we've got a couple here at Leo Minster, Virginia Beach, and Portland. Hmm. So let's see two twenty five hundred six. So if they are, let's say they were all yes. It really helps them. <laughs> we can get the Michigan one approved. But they definitely don't use CRM, so I can't give them credit there. Now, Found four. We'll get them pushed through. See how it goes. 